Hi, it's Craig on my R2 Building channel, and uh, this video I have taken the dome off my droid because I'm doing a project, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you what's inside this little guy and what makes him tick. So I'm going to flip this around and show you what I'm doing. So I took the dome off because I'm in the middle of a little project here. I had got my hands on one of these little LED tape light things with the remote so I could put that inside them and, you know, do some colorful little uh, things where I could... Um, actually, my plan was here to put this on the back side of the remote so I can control the lights inside of it. The Droid Dome Plexiglass Clear Dome does have a plexiglass floor on the underside so the light will shine up and I thought that might be a cool effect. I'm in the midst of installing this. I got a 12 volt USB adapter so I'm going to wire that into the dome light switch. So once he's up I've got that uh, USB adapter powered up. Then I can use the remote to ch change the lights in here. And since I had them apart, I thought I would show what makes this little guy tick. Um, we're going to start with the batteries. I've got two 12 volt, 7 amp hour batteries down low and in the back. Uh, that's overkill. So I got 14 amp hours of batteries here. Uh, the batteries start with having their own fuse block right at the battery so that power comes up to this little homemade terminal block negative and positive sides uh, that terminal block does have directly hardwired to it a recharge port so when i plug in the recharge it's powering it's recharging the batteries through the terminal block from this terminal block we got heavy duty wires coming over to the main power distribution area. Looks very complicated, but this is quite simple. I'm going to break it down. Um, gosh, where should I start? Uh, we got power coming over here to two switches. This powers up the droid control systems over here. This switch just puts power to the dome. So if uh, I'm just having them on display, just sitting there, I can shut down the RC and just have the dome lights blinking. So over here, we have yet another fuse block. There's four fuses in here. They're labeled dome uh, rotation, foot drive, foot drive, and 232. Um, the 232, there's a servo right here. Uh, this servo operates uh, these two micro switches. Two of them together makes a dual pole, dual throw switch, which is a forward reverse switch. Uh, and that controls the 232. Um, the, there is the RC receiver. That RC receiver not only powers that servo, it powers a servo up in the front for the sound box and the the power trunk release that uh, flips the front panels open, and I'll show you that in a minute. There are two boards in here. Boy, this is going to be really hard to get in here to show you this. But there are two boards in here. That's my speed controller board for the foot drives. Um, I don't know. I think that is one of the robot power boards. And then above that, and it's really hard to see it, is right where my finger is is a it's covered in like a white shrink wrap it is just a single speed controller for the dome and that rotates my pitman there it is um pitman motor is mounted on a hinge and it is uh, spring loaded so when i put the dome on this is spring loaded to ride on the inside of the dome to turn the dome left and right uh Let's see, from there, there is my power trunk solenoid going to these strings. This is so ridiculously stupid and cheap, but uh, these strings pretty much just operate. Um, it pulls on this and it linkages to this other door over here. And same thing over here, it uh, pulls on this string and it linkages 
and operates two doors. I'm going to swing around to the front to show you that. So you, every time I hit that, it's popping open and popping open. Um, here is the stereo headphone jack for the slip ring power into the dome. I've got a stereo headphone plug that plugs into there. There's a high arc that attaches to the dome. It's not even centered. It's uh, off center, but it doesn't matter if you have a coaxial cable, rigid. Um, it uh, it works for slip ring power. Uh, let me power this guy up, and let's see here. We're gonna bring this droid. Okay, we've just powered up our RC system. So, um, also like right here, if I take this joystick and move it left and right, I'm spinning that Pitman motor to rotate the dome. If I push it forward, I'm turning that servo to hit a little momentary switch for that power trunk release. Then, if I pull this lever downward, I'm hitting that servo for the sound box, which is in the front. Uh, I don't think we can see that. The servo is hitting that button right down in there. Ah, 232. Um, this is, let's flip the switch. Okay, so this is um, completely different from anything I've ever done before. This right here is a power seat slide from a General Motors vehicle. There's a, this beam right here is actually a track. And on the underside, there's a block in there with uh, nylon slides. A gear, because this is the gearbox and this is the motor. That's the power seat slide mechanism in there. Uh, extremely powerful. I mean, I don't have to tell you how powerful these are. If you were sitting in your car seat and you were trying to um, stop the power seat from sliding forward by pushing your feet on the floor and pushing your back into the backrest, you couldn't stop that thing. Uh, the problem with these power seat slides for 232, they're not very effective for like middle leg deployment. I mean, they do go a full 9, 10 inch travel, but it takes 9, 10 seconds for it to happen. So what I'm doing here is I'm only utilizing about 2 inches of travel. Here's my pipe right here. This lever goes up, and then it pins in to that slide there. So if I flip the 232 again, you might be able to see that slide sliding back and forcing that lever. So about two inches of travel, two seconds. And what it's also doing here is I've got that uh, bicycle seat clamp on there. And that is taking the middle foot, which is on this uh, dual beam, kind of like a scissor action. You know what it's like? It's like those uh, adjustable back bar, uh, basketball backboard goals where you got the, the, the two sets of arms going out to the goal. And as you raise it up and down, the backboard remains vertical. So it's kind of like that. And it's being forced by these pipes that are kind of attached to this lever right here. So I'm going to flip that one more time. So that's dropping the middle foot. Um, it, I wouldn't recommend doing one motor for two functions on, on a full-size droid because the problem with this is he's not very stable in three-legged mode. Uh, when I drive him around, it brings, the, it brings the center of gravity further forward, but the problem is because the body is so short, the caster in that foot 
um, which it's a swivel caster, so when he's driving forward, the swivel caster is to the back. That swivel caster is in line with the front wheels in the two side feet. So he's not very stable in three-legged mode. He's more stable in two-legged mode when I'm driving him around. So I think maybe I'll demonstrate that real quick. So that is on a single stick drive here. So So I thought I would show you the inner workings of this little guy. Not very complicated. It looks like it only because I could have routed my wires a little bit better in there. But, um, oh, and one more thing I wanted to mention. So my single speed controller for the dome, I believe this one I cut into the shrink wrap to engage the battery eliminator circuit. I only did it on one of these two speed controllers. So the RC receiver is being powered by the speed controller. I do not need a battery pack for that RC receiver. So that is my video. Um, I think that's about all I need to show on that one because there isn't any more to show. He's quite simple. So this is Craig on my R2 Builders channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give me a like or possibly subscribe. Catch you later.